Uh, hello to all my YouTube followers. Uh, I am streaming live right now so that people can see what I'm doing. I have a plate in my hand, a very large plate, and I have this large plastic-like bowl or cup. And I want to do a demonstration. God really gave this to me. I'm seeing this so much right now. So many of us are trying to figure out where's our place in life. So let's just picture this plastic cup, this large plastic container I'm holding, almost like representing life representing you know the world and we all are trying to figure out where is our place where is our place in this world and why is it that sometimes what we seem to be doing is not fitting and this is the problem that's happening right now let's just say this large wooden plate represents us let's say this represents life you guys take a look at this this is what's happening right now you see this you see that this plate is now sitting on top of this cup we can't get it inside and we're looking at life. Just follow me a second. It's going to make sense. We're looking at life. We're looking at what in the world is going on in our lives that we can't seem to figure out. Why is it not fitting into this cup? No matter how hard I'm trying, why am, am I not quite centered in where I need to be and where I'm trying to get? I'm turning it in this direction. I'm turning it in this direction. And I can't seem to get it to fit inside. Now, for those of you who are listening or watching on my YouTube, um, I'm streaming live with some of my followers right now, so that's why you see me looking down. But I can't seem to get this fit inside. And the reason I'm having this conversation with you all right now, this is all out of love. I have never in my life, in all my given 50 something plus years on this earth, ran into so many people who are frustrated in life and trying to figure out what direction to go in. Where do I go right now? Why, why do I not seem to quite have this figured out? I'm trying to get this inside. Uh, now, for those who are listening to my podcast, I'm trying to fit this very large plate inside of this little cup. And no matter how I turn it, you guys see how I'm trying to turn it? No matter how I turn it and what I do, it's just not seeming to fit. And I'm not quite sure what is happening. This is how we start off in life. We start off by, 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 by trying to figure out where in the world am I going with this? Now, if there's anyone that can relate to me, I want you to write in the comment section, I can relate. I want you, to, you all to write those notes in there right now because I have, I'm not done with this demonstration. But can anyone relate to what I'm saying right now that you've not quite figured out where is my flow? Why am I not quite exactly doing what exactly I know I'm put here to do? In fact, what the heck am I put here to do? I haven't quite figured that out. I thought I knew what it was. I tried it and I still can't see that's working out. So I wanna see some comments I can relate because I was not gonna go live in this demonstration. I was only gonna do this on my YouTube and God just lit a fire in me and says, no, 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 no. There are some people right now that need to see what I just put into you. So I want you all to type in the comment, I can relate if this is defining you. This defines the world. This defines, you know, we all have our position in life where we're trying to get, but this is where we're at right now. And for those of you who are listening to my podcast, I have this large plate sitting on top, top of this cup. This is where we are right now. Look at that. And then frustrated, you're looking at it. And then you're like, well, maybe if I turn it this way, then maybe that'll work out. That's the problem, right? Or you know what, okay, maybe if I just, maybe if I just tilt it this way a little bit, then things are gonna work out the right way. These are the calls I'm getting, you guys. These are the emails coming to me. These are the messages. Well, maybe if I flip it this way, I, I, I kind of been doing things the wrong way. I need to go in this angle. Now I'm going to be able to get that to fit inside. And then you take a look back and you still cannot get this inside of this cup. Now, for those of you who are just joining, I have this, this small cup and this large plate, and the goal is to try to get this plate inside of here so that we can fit and know where, where we stand in life and, and walk in our flow and in our anointing. So we're doing this, we're doing this, we're turning the plate, we're moving it around, and it's just not fitting. So if you guys can relate to that, just put in, I can relate, because I got something for you, baby. I got something. I see some more I can relate. Make me understand. Someone says I'm not the only one going through. You're not, baby. You're not, Vero. And I think that's why God had me do this. So I want you guys to listen up because this is important. Some of you, and this is what's happening over and over and over again. I have a righteous anger about it right now because I'm seeing it too much. Even late last night, I had a conversation with someone else who was going through this exact thing feeling like a failure or feeling like I'm just not understanding why things are not kind of going in the flow. I'm trying to fit. I'm trying to get myself into the flow. 
you know, we're, we're imagining this cup is just sort of, you know, the world and everyone's trying to get in there and find their place. So here's what some of you all do. This is what I've been noticing. So this represents you, right? You say, well, well, maybe, maybe I just need to go from a different angle and stretch myself in a different direction. I get it. That was the wrong shape. <clears throat> so maybe I just need to, you know, leave this job and go to this other job. Or maybe I need to put that goal aside and I need to do what everybody else is out here doing. So then you become, think of it in the spirit. Let me slow down because this is really important if you guys get what I'm saying. I'm dropping some pearls right now. And somebody, even if it's one person, will pick this up. Everything that you do is spiritual. And you become what you think about all day long. So some of you, you think, okay, well, if I just maybe, okay, let me leave this job and go to this other job. Or maybe, you know, instead of doing this particular type of business, let me jump over here and do this one. So you change the shape. And, and, and you're trying to fit, and it's like, God dang it, what is happening? I don't, I don't let another year or two go by, right? And I'm trying. I've tried something different. I'm not this anymore, right? And you're still trying to get that fit in there, and something's not working. So then you say to yourself, well, you know what? I got it. I, I, I don't read a few books and done a few things. Let me now. I'm going somewhere with this. You guys should follow me. Let me now just take on a whole nother dimension or shape or whatever, because I just know this is going to work. This is, this is, these are outside things we're changing. This is what I'm going to do now. And then you sit that on there and you're like, doggone it, I'm still not in my flow. Now, for those who are listening to my podcast, I went from a very large round plate to a large rectangular size, almost like a serving tray that still won't fit inside the container. And now I have a, a bowl, you know, almost the size of a cereal bowl. It's a wooden bowl. All of these instruments are wood, not that that matters. So now I have this bowl, and this bowl still would not fit inside this cup. But I don't understand. I got rid of some things in life that I, sh that, that I needed to do. I changed some things around. But why is it still not fitting? I am still trying to figure out what is this thing in life? Why does it seem to be working for everybody else and not for me? So you sit, now I'm sitting this bowl on top of this container because it still won't sit inside. So many of you, some of you are like this. You've made some changes and done some things, but it's still not, you still not fitted. You, you just, it's, it's just not working. So you think, well, let me turn the bowl over this way. Let me turn it upside down. That's what I need to do. I just need to move to another state. Because the people I'm around are not the right environment, so let me just move. So maybe you move to another state. And I'm not mimicking anyone, you guys. I'm just giving examples of what I've heard, right? Or, you know, uh, maybe I'm in the wrong program. I need to get over here and do this one, so let me go there. So you turn the bowl over that way. Still not working. Dang it. What's happening? Well, maybe what I need to do, uh, let me throw some money at it. Right. So you take out, you know, you, you, you start throwing some money at all these odd things you see everybody else doing. I call that chasing seeds that don't belong to you. Maybe if I just do something like that, it'll, it'll start working. And as you can see, now I have money inside of this bowl. The money still ain't making it fit. So you mean I don't went out and got my hair together? You know, uh, got myself together. I don't, you know, paid a few bills off or done something, right? I'm investing in a couple little things. I don't know. I'm trying to go to any program somebody's throwing out. I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. I, I really honestly don't know. Why is this still not fitting? I'm in my 40s and 50s at this point. You guys just type, I can relate if this is making sense to you. I'm in my 40s and 50s and 60s at this point. I should have this figured out. Why is it that no matter what I'm doing, it's still not fitting? Anyone can relate to this so far. Let me just see. I can relate. I'm seeing some comments coming in saying I can relate. I can relate. For those of you who are following, I have a bowl that's on top of this large container, small container, I should say. And this container, let's just say it represents life. It represents the world. And we all are trying to find our place. And what I'm trying to get at, baby, because I'm getting way too many at this point, thousands of messages. That's why I'm doing this, you guys. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm trying to show you what's really happening. We've gone from this large plate, right, 
representing a stage in life. We've gone from this to this large rectangular size serving whatever. And now we figure because, you know, we don't got things together a little bit and we're trying some different things, we're still like this and the bowl cannot fit in there. Right? It's just not fitting. Then some of you, here's what's happening with some of you. Some of you, you look closer. You're saying to yourself, okay, so let me downside, let me, let me, let me just kind of downsize a little bit more. This looks almost like it. Now I'm holding for those who are listening to my podcast, I'm holding like a coaster in my hand. And this is for those of you who that's you, you just certain that this going to work. You, you just certain. Can't nobody tell you, you haven't figured out life at this point. Right. And you don't invest at all your time, money, prayers, everything, because you just know finally at this stage, this is where I'm supposed to be. And doggone it, you go to put it in there, and it looked like it's going to fit, and it just won't go all the way down. It won't get in there. And this is where the frustration comes in at because you're so close. And you just don't understand with all the work that you've done on yourself. For those of who are listening, I have this coaster, and it almost goes into this container uh, just about halfway, no, but no matter which way I turn it, it actually just won't fit. So then you think, now I know what the problem is. I know what the problem is now. The problem is I need to get some better. Uh, I'm just going to use an example because this, this is an example a lot of entrepreneurs tell me. I'm just going to go out now and invest in some better equipment. You know, let me, let me focus on I'm holding some highlighters or some markers in my hand for those who are listening to my podcast and those who are watching on YouTube. And I've got a purple, red, and a blue highlighter. And now I'm getting ready to start coloring this little coaster that's in my hand. Let me focus on, this is what some of you guys are doing now. Let me focus on changing the outside a little bit more. I got to get some better equipment. You see how I'm coloring it red? Because this is what's going to make it work. I got to get me like a better microphone or something, right? You see that? You see that? I got to just get in the right relationship. You know, maybe that's it. And of course, my blue mark is not working. Oh, oh well. Well, that represents life because sometimes things don't work. I just got to get in the right relationship. You see that? If I, and I'm coloring this, uh, this uh, coaster in my hand for those who are going to be listening to this podcast later. Many of you, let me slow this down because this is a very important point. Many of you all, especially those who feel that they're so close to figuring it out, you're looking at all the things on the outside that's got to be done. If I can just get this colored right, maybe it'll fit now. Let me see. And it's still not working out. And at this point, you just are like, I, I just don't get this. I don't understand. How is it that for so many other people, things seem to be going in that right direction? They're in that flow. What is it that I need to continue doing or that I'm not doing? And then you just think, well, it's this other person's fault because of the way they're treating me. It's this environment I'm in. And again, you're on that outside. You're coloring. You know? Maybe I just got to go, you know, move in another area, right? Oh, somebody's selling a program doing something, you know, uh, uh, I, I, that's not my calling, but I'm going to try to do that. I want to go do something. I got to jump on something everybody else is doing. So again, I'm coloring all these spaces on this coaster. Can anyone relate to this? For those of you who are just joining, you're just going to have to come back and watch the video again later because you're probably like, what in the world is she doing? But I'm representing life. I'm representing no matter what we do, no matter what we try, even if while we're focusing on this outside, we still can't get it to fit on the inside and make that work. You see that? This is where a whole lot of people are at right now. We've thrown money at the issue. We've thrown trying to move. We've thrown blaming on other people. We've thrown every single thing that we know to do. And here's what I'm here to tell you all. I want to read you a passage real quick. And this passage is going to bring it on home. And I'm going to close this message out in a little bit. I want everybody to turn over to Romans 12, 2 really quickly. Everybody turn over to Romans 12, 2. Because I really want you guys to understand, you become what you think about all day long. And I want you guys to understand that failure is not failure at all. Failure really is a mindset. Uh, there's someone, I think his name is, uh, I think his name is Napoleon Hill who said that. Failure is a mindset. Failure is only failure if your butt accepts it as failure. That's when it becomes failure. I'm going to say that again. Failure is a mindset. 
Failure is actually not real. It's something we make up. Failure is only failure when we accept it as failure. Instead of looking at life and looking at all of these temporary defeats are just pointing us in certain directions as showing us this is not the way to go. Baby, this is not where your gifting is at. This is not where your calling is at. I was just telling my, 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 one of my kids last night, I had a long talk. You know, my kids are all adults now. Hope you don't mind me sharing this. You won't know which son because I've got three sons. But I was talking to one of them last night, and uh, he was even going through some things. And I said to him, I said, baby, I said, let's turn over to Matthew real quick. And I took him over to the story in Matthew. Let me slow this down. I'm going too fast. If you got to go, just go. Uh, but I want to slow this down. First of all, in Romans 12:2. That teaches us, do not be conformed any longer to the pattern of this world, but be, renew, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Baby, the change is within. It's not, for those of you who were, who were, uh, who've been listening to me for the last 15 minutes, it's not the outside. I don't care which way you turn this plate. It's not going to fit in there. I don't care where you move. I, I don't care who gave you some idea, you should do this, you should do that. It's not going to fit because you were not made to fit in that. It does not matter what, what you, you see this? That won't fit. This long board is not going to fit in here. What was the other one we tried? You said, well, I'm just going to do this because this is part going to work. It's not going to fit. Look at that. It's closer. I'm not going to lie. It actually almost does, but it's not fitting. And then you start changing the outside some more. It's not going to fit. We have to be transformed. You can throw all the money in the world you want to throw at it, right? We have to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And when we are transformed, now I'm holding up this small little wooden, uh, beautiful uh, little wooden cup. When we are transformed and we understand that our mindset has a whole lot to do, understanding who the heck we are, walking in flow, which I'm going to talk to you all in just a minute about that, walking in the flow that we're supposed to be walking in. Then you're gonna understand, oh my gosh, look at that, how that cups fit inside of that. I'm finally in my flow. It is finally working out for me. I'm finally producing the wealth that I wanna produce. I'm finally, you know, helping other people the way I wanna help people. See how that cup fits inside of there? Now let me give you a passage in case you say, well, is this biblical, Z? Explain to me in the Bible, is it biblical? Glad you asked. Turn over to Matthew real quick. I'm not going to let my babies, and all of you guys are my babies, I'm not going to have you just out there ripping and running and trying to do everything, and you don't even understand that the biggest change comes from within. And that's the part you guys tend to overlook the most. Now, when I say you all, I'm referring to myself as well. I'm speaking from wisdom. I'm speaking from mistakes I've made. Do you have any idea how many mistakes I've made my whole doggone life? Do you understand? I'm, I'm talking to you all from love and from my own convictions because I've messed up so many times, so many times doubted myself, didn't know that I had the strength, the power that God's given me, the gifting, the anointing. I knew God anointed me and blessed me, but I'm like, I don't quite know if this really good. You see what I'm saying? And so I began chasing seeds and chasing after things that don't belong to me. You know how many programs are out there teaching people that they can make money if you do this and do that and set up this and set up that and do this and do that? You guys are running around all over the freaking place and it's really beginning to frustrate me. And I mean that, I want you all to take this as love as though, I gotta be careful with this because I don't put myself above anyone. I'm speaking to you all as if you were my own children. This is nothing but love talking, nothing but love talking. I'm trying to tell your butt, you cannot, especially at this stage in life, afford to be all over the freaking place chasing every shiny object that's coming your way. Because maybe, maybe, maybe this time it'll fit. Maybe if I turn it this way, it'll fit. You get what I'm saying? And for those who are listening, I just put the bowl back on top of the cup anymore. Uh, uh, again, I just put the bowl on top. That's what I'm seeing. All over the place chasing things because what you tried didn't work. It almost worked. It's kind of working a little bit or it's not working fast enough or I'm not quite in my flow, right? And, and, and you're in a, a gazillion places. 
And I'm seeing too many broken hearts come towards me with all of that. And you think that the solution is on the outside. And I'm trying to explain to you all with all the love and sincerity in my heart. I pray for y'all doggone but so much you just don't even know. Even the haters, believe it or not. Believe it or not, even the haters. Because if you hate me, you don't have a spirit of discernment to know that I'm speaking from a place of love. You cannot afford at this time in life to have your butt in 50 different directions. Some of you, and I know this because I've gone through it, baby, procrastinating, putting things off, not sure which direction to go, walking around in insecurity, tired, trying every little thing somebody's throwing at you because you think the outside something is going to make this fit inside of this. And I'm here to tell you that's not how it works. I had a wonderful talk with one of my sons last night. I won't go into detail with it. I'll just say, uh, don't think my family gets excluded from this kind of stuff as well. And so one of my sons came and talked to me. I was up this morning. I get up very early to sit and read my Bible. And he came upstairs and he sat next to me on the stairs. I was in my living room. And uh, I won't go into detail, but he just shared some things with me. And I says, oh, baby. I says, baby, we got to turn on over to Matthew. So I'm going to talk to you guys like I talked to my son. Turn over to Matthew chapter 6. There is a minister, and I can't take credit for this. I give credit where credit is due. A minister, his name is Dr. Miles Monroe. Uh, and Dr. Miles Monroe preached on this a long time ago. I've only heard maybe at best, maybe three or four of his sermons. I probably need to listen to a lot more of his sermons. I tend to listen to a lot of Apostle Joshua Selman from Africa and a couple others. But anyway, uh, Dr. Miles Monroe talked about this. And again, I'm giving credit where credit is due. But he broke down Matthew 6 in a way that I never really saw it. So Matthew 6, verse 25 through 33, we're going to turn and read that. If you guys got to go, just go. I understand some of you all want to keep scrolling and looking at pictures and videos. Go do that. But for those who are looking for some meat and they just need a little bit of hope right now, this is going to really bless you. Turn over to Matthew 6, verse 25 through 33. This is one of my mama's favorite passages. And she would always recite this passage. And even before she died, she, she um, uh, not long before she died, she reminded me of this passage. It's called Do Not Worry. Now, if you've read my book Necessary, I don't have a copy of it here with me, but if you don't have it, go get it my book necessary I actually talked about um, about this in here but Matthew chapter 6 verse 25 uh, through 33 I talked about why I had a problem with this passage so let me read it first and let me let me let me drop on you a few pearls of wisdom and then I'm going to get my butt off of this live it says do not worry this is uh, Matthew 6 25 through 33 are you guys there just say yes if you're still following along so glad to hear these words now really need to hear this all righty baby I'm so glad that you're here that you're encouraged are right, you guys put a yes in there um, if you guys are ready for me to read this through. I want to see some yeses come through. Thank you for the hearts, baby. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. I see the hearts and messages coming through. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. So am I seeing some yeses? Okay, so Matthew 6, 25 through 33. Let's read this. Now, I used to have a problem with this passage, but I'm going to tell you. Uh, the secret in here, and, and again, I give credit where credit is due. Dr. Miles Monroe uh, said this in a sermon a long time ago, and it touched my heart. But it's called Do Not Worry. It says, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is life not more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air, for they do not sow or reap or store away in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them daily. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? And this is one of my favorite parts. And why do you worry about clothes? He says, see how the lilies of the field grow. He says, they do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. And it goes on to say, if that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? And it goes on to say, so do not worry about, look, wait, let me get back to the passage because I'm, I'm, I'm doing it from memory. I do it better when I do it from memory. Verse 31, so do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things and get this. And then it says, and your heavenly father knows that you need them. 
Now, here's the part I want you to settle your butts down and listen, because this is the part people don't want to hear. This is the part you don't want to hear. Verse 33, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. And that last verse says, each day has enough trouble of its own. Now, let me bring this home, because I already know some of you guys. You ain't even got a comment. I know what you're going to say. I used to have the biggest problem in the world with this, because if you read my book, Necessary, there's a chapter in there called Through the Fire, when I talked about how my finances was a complete ruin. My mama was dying. My marriage was falling apart. My son, he hadn't died at that point, but he was starting to die. His health was starting to fail him. Every freaking thing you can mention was all kind of happening almost simultaneously, right? So the audacity of God saying, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, when I didn't even know how the following month my kids were going to eat, let alone have something, or bills are going to get paid, that really kind of ticked me off. I'm just being honest with you guys. You guys have caught me in rare form right now. I had an issue with that. I love God. I was going to church and praying and all of that stuff. I've been going to church my whole life because almost everybody in my family is a preacher, minister, deacon, prophetess, first one, uh, woman of the church, my whole family just about. So going to church wasn't an issue for me. But I was going through some mess, right? So you telling me, but seek first his kingdom. How do I seek first his kingdom when I can barely keep my head above water? Like it just seems backwards, right? Y'all better hang in with me because you guys are going to get blessed by this if you, if you follow and understand. Let me see, are you guys still there? Are you all picking up what I'm laying down? Let me hear. You guys comment in the, uh, for those of you who are live, let me see you comment. I hear you. Okay, I hear some people saying, I hear you. I can relate to that anger. Uh, and they overcame him by the power of the testimony. Someone says, yes, tell me the truth. Someone saying, yes, Z, I shared that verse with my mom this week. Amen. Somebody saying, I hear you. I just want to hear some, I hear you. Because this is not entertainment. Don't just sit here just watching me. Comment. Let me know if this is touching your heart, if, you, if you're getting this. You're, nobody's paying me to do this, by the way. I'm doing this because I'm trying to share some convictions with you all so you can get your butts out of the fire and get moving. You understand? So I just did a demonstration. For those of you who missed the demonstration who are just joining live, this will be saved on my YouTube channel. Um, uh, this video, uh, it'll, it'll probably be uploaded, I don't know, maybe by Sunday or what have you. Uh, and it'll be available on my podcast. And it'll be saved on my Instagram. That's true. It'll be saved on my Instagram today. So you can go back and watch the whole thing there as well. Anyway, where was I at? Okay, so Matthew 6, 25 through 33. I used to have such a problem with that verse. Because I'm like, God, when your head is barely above water, or when you're going through things, especially in a relationship or finances or health or whatever, how do we seek first the kingdom? I'm already doing that. At least I felt like I was, right? I didn't understand at the time, and this is what I was talking to one of my sons about, you know, because, you know, he, he's at that stage, and, and I want to be careful with what I share, but he's just like, every other day is like, well, maybe I should do this, or I'm thinking about doing this, and somebody was saying you could do it. I said, oh, baby, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. The answers are not on the outside. The answers are on the inside. Because if you begin from that demonstration I did earlier, if you begin just focusing on that outside, yeah, you may be able to flip it like that. That is true. That's true. You may be able to, and for those of you who are listening to my podcast, I'm putting the different plates and bowls and different things back on top of this cup. You may be able to even go in this direction, right? And this may seem like it's going to work. Yeah, I get it. I get it. You may be able to do a little things. You may even be able to change the color of it. I'm holding up this little pad thing that I was changing the color. But as you can see, none of that was really working to make it fit. When we're focusing on the outside, that's only temporary fixes. So then that's when we begin to define ourselves as failures, which the devil is alive. We begin to define ourselves as failures because we get afraid or we don't see things working out. The Bible is giving you the secret. The secret is if we seek first the kingdom of God, you may say, well, Z, what does that mean? I'm already praying. I am doing that. I'm going to church. I'm praying, right? I'm talking about also not only in prayer, but working on being transformed by the renewing of your mind. So 
the, the, the transformation, listen to me, you all, the transformation has to come from within so that when failure presents itself and say you should be further along in life at this point or look at what kind of parent you've been or look at how you've been working on this all this time and this didn't work out. When the mindset is transformed, when you understand who you are, when you understand what your purpose is and what you're put here for, you're able to look at that. And I like the way Napoleon Hill put it in one of his books. I'm reading all kinds of books. One of the books that he wrote, he puts it, he says, you know, when you look at that, you're able to see, uh, how's the words he used it? He used the right words. He says, you're able to see temporary defeats as an unborn seed of opportunity. And I says, oh, I like the way that that sounds. So failure is only failure when you define it as failure. But you got to work on figuring out who you are. And that's the part that you guys tend to skip the most. I'm just keeping it real with you. I skipped it the most. I, I, yeah, I know I'm a child of God. And I know God's blessed me to motivate people and inspire people and this and that. But I didn't understand that I've got increase in my capacity. I didn't understand I need to learn. Yes, I'm reading and I'm praying, but I need to grow and develop. You want to become so valuable with that thing that you do, you can't be replaced. So that's inward work, baby. That's not necessarily outward work. That's inward. As you begin to work inward, working on your spirit, drawing nearer to God, seeking first his kingdom. God, who am I again? Remind me again, who am I? Because I keep forgetting. I have honest prayers like that with God, right? What am I supposed to be doing? What is it from my past, God, that I need to be working on and doing? Now, I'm going to keep it really 100 with you guys. Sometimes, and I wrote about this in my book, Necessary. Oh, this is good. Sometimes, sometimes God can't allow you to get to that next level yet because you don't have your butt ready. There are things that you need to change, grow, and develop in so you can handle and be ready for that next level. I said that to one of my kids. I won't go into some things, but I said, baby, I said, um, I said, I'm your mama. You know I love you. I said, but, you know, can God bless you, can bless you with a lot of money? Can you handle that? And I won't go into detail because I said, I remember it wasn't that long ago you had such and such and such and I won't go into detail and you just kind of lost it like went off and was gone forever came back broke his all I mean like just you know flundered all of he's like yeah that is true ma so are you positioned and not that I'm bringing up past sins are you positioned have you learned have you matured now we all gonna say oh but it'll be different this next time <laughs> yeah I'm ready now this time I'm serious I even say that yeah I'm ready God I'm ready but God knew my heart. God couldn't bless and do certain things in my life because I wasn't, where's that cup at? I w- I'm holding a smaller cup up now for those who are listening to my podcast. Oh, Lord, please let one of your babies get this. Jesus, Jesus, give me the words. Please, God. You guys got to know that God desires to bless you. Do you not know that I desire to give my kids everything in the world that they want? Now I've got four, all adults. I can't give them all that they want, right? The one son that talked to me last night, I could pretty much solve almost all of his sort of issues that he's got going on now. I can't give it all to him. I tried that. And you, you want to know what? It don't work. I found out the hard way that when I just give it all and they've not matured and developed the capacity, first of all, they don't know who they are. Second of all, they've not figured out what their purpose is and what they're here for. I had to learn the hard way. Oh, my gosh. They just trample over all of it. It just finds its way out of their hands. I know I lost some of you guys. It finds the way out of the hands. You want to know why? And listen to me carefully because this is going to shock some of you all. Because your circumstances, the situations, the results is probably a better word is going to always, now Bob Proctor talked about this a lot, for those who know uh, Mr. Bob Proctor, God rest his soul, your circumstances are going to always match, or your results, I should say, your mindset. Oh, I know that's hard to hear. Your results are going to match that mindset. That's deep. That's deep. So, You can give someone, like I want to give my kids everything that they want. I really do. 
I grew up poor as all get out. So God knows I want to just pour and give my kids everything. And that don't mean I don't bless them and give them things. But I know enough to know because I've been down this road. Some of you guys, if you've been parents and some of your kids are adults, you already know what I'm talking about. You, you help them get a car and they didn't take care of it and they didn't even do this and do that and you don't even know what a car at Jesus right you don't help them get furniture and get their first apartment and this and that you don't even know what nothing's at because they didn't work for it there was no capacity built for it there was no appreciation for it even though it was in the moment I went left field let me come back to where I'm at let me get off of my family the whole premise of this you all the results are not going to be found on the outside and that's where you've been looking. And now I'm challenging you all. You got to look inward. You got to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. I will never in my life, as long as I live, be afraid to say that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. I know some people got a problem with that. And I'm sorry that I can't be sorry. I'm sorry that I can't be sorry. I don't look down on you for whatever religion or whatever you choose to do in your life. If anybody knows me, you've been following my podcast. And by the way, my name is Zenja Glass. Everyone calls me Z. My podcast is Unlocking Greatness, podcast with Zenja Glass. But if anyone's been following me, you all know, hey, you get to do whatever you want to do. But if you're following this podcast, you're going to learn something about the Lord. You get my point? You get to make the decisions that you want to make out there, but there's consequences with that. Now, does that mean that we can't grow and overcome? Absolutely not. But we focus inwardly. We, we focus on seeking first the kingdom, which I had a problem with that. I can't say that enough because I thought that was too passive. I thought, please explain to me. And if you all read my book, Necessary, on that chapter, you know what I'm talking about. Because I remember when I went to a Bible study group a long time ago, and I had every issue in the world you could imagine. And I remember they wanted to start talking about me about sitting in silence and listening to the Holy Spirit and being guided by the Holy Spirit. And when I left that Bible study, you guys remember what I said? I told those ladies, I, would never, I won't be back again. And she says, well, why? I thought you enjoyed the Bible study. I said, you all are too weak for me. <laughs> now, I'm best friends with them now. I really am. In fact, I just talked to her the other day. Uh, her name's Virginia. She's, she's an author. She's wrote amazing books. But I said, you guys are too weak for me. I can't believe I said those words. It was many, many years ago, but I did. And she said, two weeks. I said, I said, if the best solution you can come up with at this stage in my life is I first need to get grounded and sit and know who I am in God and begin to train to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, I says, I, I, I'm sorry, that's, that's too passive. Now, that wasn't all that I did. Of course, I had to put in the work and do some things and, and this and that. But that was step one. And I didn't realize that the foundation has to be solid. I better start wrapping this up because I got to get to a meeting. The foundation has to get solid first. My biggest concern that I have with the vast majority of people that I'm hearing from is we are not building a solid foundation because everyone, almost everyone, is kind of freaking out trying to figure out life. And so we're putting these poles and doing all these things and trying to make this bowl stick. You see this? And trying to make this stick, and that ain't working, right? Trying to maybe do this, right? Trying to do all of these things, right? But the foundation's not solid. So guess what happens when the foundation isn't solid? You all over the freaking place. You're insecure. You try some things for a couple of weeks, a couple of months, in some cases, a couple of days, and you get off of that and do something else, right? You, you think the answers are on the outside, so you're all over the place, not really having a sense of really who you are, the focus, what, why am I here? Why am I here? What is my purpose? What is my focus? God, what do you want me working on? And then, then getting yourself into a good community, a good mentorship, a good coaching program, a good uh, uh, environment where you can be constantly fed and you can begin to grow. And you can begin to put your plans and actions in place and stay in that direction and stay your butt focused. That's what's missing. We're jumping over the foundation and we're just going to, for example, where the money is at. And I'm here to tell you, I have the advantage of hearing from thousands of people a day every single day in some way or another whether it's direct messages emails or you name it or even my mentorship program right I hear from thousands of people that is not an exaggeration almost on a daily basis so I'm not making this up I'm not making this up 
I'm teaching you all. This is a, a, a issue that I'm seeing worldwide. The foundation has to be solid, but nobody wants to take the time to build the foundation. And the foundation is what makes it sprout and grow. And get this, many times at great speed. I've been telling you guys for the longest. I've, I've talked to you all many times. I said, you all, for those of you, and I just want to throw this out this before I wrap this up, uh, especially for those of you who already joined the Unlocking Greatness community. For those of you who are looking to start the journey to figure out who the heck you are, who does God say you are? God, what is my purpose? What is my calling? Why am I here? Right? I told you all, anyone that joins that becomes a member of the Unlocking Greatness community, and those introductory rates are still there, by the way. But I said, anyone that joins and becomes a member, some people, and I've noticed this, so now I'm talking to members of the Unlocking Greatness community. And by the way, you can join at unlockinggreatness.com. I have to get on some of them quite a bit sometimes, and I love them so much because sometimes they come in, they skip the core, which is the, the retreat. I have a whole 12 week retreat called the necessary retreat. The reason I push so hard to tell everybody to go through that retreat is because those first three weeks you sit and you meditate and you discover who the heck you are, right? Or you, you discover why am I here? You learn how to capture in the spirit what's yours first before you go get it. You get that foundation solid. Then you begin to go through that stages of, okay, what do I need to let go of, of this next level? That's the second set of three weeks you learn. Some of you all already in the program. Then that third set of three weeks, you begin to go into preparation, getting prepared for all that's ahead, even the obstacles. And the last set of three weeks going into mastery. Then, and I'm changing my program up in the next week or so, uh, I'm structuring it in a way now where everyone's going to have to walk through that before or they can even come into my live workshop sessions. I know that's a surprise to people. So probably in the next maybe week or so, we're going to change it up. Because right now, the way that it is, even if you were to join in there today, you'd be able to go straight on into the live workshop sessions. The reason I'm changing that up is too many people are just joining the live, you know, the, the weekly the uh, workshop sessions that I have, which is great. I love you all, and we have the best time in the world. But the foundation's got to be built. So you can't just skip through, yeah, I don't really want to spend that much time or watch only one course or listen to just a little bit about who I am and not do the homework and understand this is the foundation. Now, I want to be clear. I'm not saying my program is the answer to life. You go wherever the heck you want to go. Just get yourself into a good Bible-based and mindset coaching platform or a good church that teaches this. That's even better, right? Get yourself into a good organization where you're going to walk through a process. Go on a, on a mind is called the necessary retreat, but go, take your butt on a retreat where you can rediscover who you are, get that foundation solid. So as you begin to build, you're not putting a bowl on top of something that don't belong. You'll be able to build step by step and go in the direction you should be going. So. I love you all. I pray that this has encouraged you all. It is time to stop running around, having your butt all over the place and get yourself focused and centered. Start with the foundation. Matthew 6, 25 through 33 is what we just read. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now, I know most coaches are not going to tell you that. It's all about, well, you got to get a business plan together first. You got to first figure out what your purpose is. The devil is a lie. You first need to seek first God and his righteousness. God, is there anything in my life I need to get right about me? What, what in me don't look like you and don't smell like you? Transform me. We just read Romans 12 too. What in me is not right? Help me, God, to hear from you, to hear from the Holy Spirit. I repent of my sins. I love you, God. Show me what you have me here for. How do I lift you to the nations? How do I help your people? How do I use these skills, these talents that you've given me so that these gifts can be poured out into others? And yes, you want God to bless your finances. Proverbs 10, teaches us the blessings of the Lord brings wealth and he adds no sorrow to it. So wait a minute, why am I sorrowful? And where's my wealth? Well, are you walking in alignment? Now, that leads me to the point I totally skipped over. In Matthew 6, 25 through 33, I mentioned Dr. Miles Monroe, but I forgot to tell you what I learned from him. I never saw this passage this way before. You guys can turn back to it. I really need to stop this live because I got to go in just a little bit. Matthew 6, 25 through 33. It talks about, um, Dr. Miles Monroe asked a question. He says, why in this passage about do not worry? He says, why are they mentioning, why did, the, why did Jesus mention, look at the birds of the air? 
for they do not sow or reap or store away in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. And why is he referring to the lilies of the field, the flowers, saying, look at the flowers. If you're worrying about stuff in life, why do I need to be watching birds and watching flowers? What does that have to do with this whole passage in Matthew 6, 25 through 33 about do not worry? Why is, is God referring to birds and flowers? Now, I'm going to see can somebody answer that really quickly before I give that, and then I'm going to close my butt out of this lie. Why is God referencing birds and referencing flowers in a passage that's all about worrying in life about things? Anyone have an answer to that? I'm going to try my, butt, my best to lean over and read it. Um, someone says, I'm glad you're doing that because I'm a member and I've started and bounced around. Baby, I'm, I'm glad we're, we're starting that whole necessary retreat over again, which we just started it over again in our last um, two weeks. So I'm actually walking through the whole retreat with everybody. And we're actually adding new lessons inside the retreat. So I appreciate you saying that because a lot of people inside of the program basically started kind of life caught up with them and they stopped walking through all those lessons. So this is a really beautiful time to start over again with everybody, including myself. So um, I'm really looking forward to it. And for those of you who do want to join us at unlockinggreatness.com, um, I would highly encourage you to join now before we change the structure and we get rid of the introductory rates. The introductory rates are only going to be there for another couple of days, and that's it. We have a whole new platform that's being built out. Um, and again, that's at unlockinggreatness.com. But why did he refer to the birds? So they live freely without fear and worry. Come on, give me some more. I want to hear that one phrase that Dr. Miles Monroe said, they don't worry. Yes, they don't worry. They trust God for their provisions. Yes, yes. Um, God supplies all of their needs. Yes. And the way that Dr. Miles Monroe put it, if I, if I remember correctly, he says they're, they're, they're in their flow. They're doing what they were put here to do. So we're supposed to be learning from nature, learning from the birds. Have you ever seen a bird worry about where's my next nest going to come from? You get my point? They're in their flow, just like the lilies of the field. So how do we get in our flow? Well, don't you think it starts within? It starts with who in the world am I? And, and you know, what, what bothers me is I say that to you all. Some people are like, well, I know who I am. I know da-da-da-da. And then when we have our workshop sessions and we begin to talk and go deeper into, well, why are you not launching that thing that God put in your heart to do? Or why are you not showing up on your social media? Then you find out there's all kind of fears and insecurities that were hidden underneath that initial statement. Because the foundation is not truly, truly, truly solid in, wow. I do know who I am and what I'm here for. I'm called to do this. I'm not going to let anything stop me from walking in this direction. I'm not going to be distracted by shiny objects. I'm not defining these life circumstances as failures. It's only a failure if I accept it as a failure. My mindset has been transformed, Romans 12 too. I'm probably going way too deep with you guys. I need to end this live. But you get my point? For those few people who I'm noticing that are focusing on what I'm talking about, learning those skill sets and beginning to grow and develop and walking in it, they are already beginning to take off and run with a newfound confidence. And that's where I want to see all of you babies at. I don't want to see y'all all over the place anymore. And I'm seeing it too much. Everybody is jumping on something, some sort of something about making money and doing this and doing that. And I get it. We all got bills to pay. But when you get out there and you randomly doing all kind of mess and you don't have that foundation solid, I can almost guarantee you because I see it all the time. All the time people are coming, you know, finally when they've gone full circle, spent a ridiculous amount of money on any kind of program you can imagine. You come full circle to, while I didn't realize the foundation wasn't solid, I got to seek first God's kingdom. I'm out here doing stuff, stuff that really ain't even my calling. I don't even like doing that is what I heard some people tell me. I don't even like this job I'm in. And I started that little business. I'm doing this thing here because I know that's a good way to make some money. Or I am in my call and get this, and I'm doing what God told me how to do it, but I'm not doing it 100%. Because there's some fears, there's some insecurities of what people are going to think, what people are going to say. You get my point? Anyway, I pray that this demonstration has helped you all. I'm going to close out my YouTube and talk to a few of the people here that are in my live. I pray you guys have been sincerely blessed by this. I love you all. You're listening to Z with Unlocking Greatness Podcast.